G'day, it's Rob here again. In that last video I showed you this great little generator I got from uh, Engine DIY. And, I, you know, I gave it a 10 out of 10. It's really good. There's only one thing with it that I wasn't happy about, and they could have done better, and probably saved me some money as well, really. They use a, they had a push-button switch to turn the light on or off. But also, if you wanted to drive in a different direction, different engine, you had to swap around the, the wiring configuration to allow for, the, to compensate for the difference in directional change, you see. And because this is an LED light, so the voltage can only run one, one way with the light. And I thought, well, that, that's, you know, epoxy set up really change, you know, you have to go in underneath and fiddle around changing this wiring. I thought a much better way to do it would be to put a, um, a crossover switch in there. A, uh, just a three pole um, crossover switch and basically that's what I've done. So I've just swapped it out. It's got off in the middle on for well, anti-clockwise in that direction and off to the right for clockwise. I actually got the, the switch going in the direction of rotation so yeah, I can't forget which way is which. Now obviously it's not working because it won't work it won't light the light up because the voltage is going in the wrong way now but uh, that's the off position and that's the on position at the same time, I also uh, use the existing connection points underneath to I bought, uh, you know, did away with all the wiring, completely redid it. And once I'd got the crossover switch in, then I used two of the uh, terminal points as takeoff points for voltage. If I want to run external lights or whatever so that so those connectors haven't gone to waste i've reused them and it also gives me the opportunity to check the voltage to see what how many volts it's putting out so i'll show you okay let's check the voltage with no load 8 volts that's a hell of a good little generator that's uh that's excellent. Eight volts. That's amazing. I'll turn the light on. Put some load on it. You can hear the motor slow down. And now we're back to 2.7, so it's still pretty good. And plenty to light up a, uh, a white LED, which of course has got the, the highest voltage requirement. So yeah, 2.7 basically. Turn it off. And we're back to 8 volts again. Pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, that's tremendous. It's going to be really, really handy. So um, let's hook up a, one of those Christmas, Christmas light LEDs. There you go. So that's just the LED. You can hear how that motor slowed down. Now this is direct from the generator. I did it this way so we bypass the um, directional switch and that way you can just use the connectors to change the polarity as you want to. And then that doesn't mean, I, you know, the, the light will be running at the same time otherwise with the uh, directional switch. So. Uh, Pretty good. Now this is where this push button used to be and this is a bigger diameter shank to the switch I put in. I, I put in a nice tiny one that were, would you know, look pretty good. You can get bigger ones, you know, this sort of 
about 12 mil shank. So yeah, I went for the smallest one I could in a pole switch. So yeah, I made up a spacer, added some brass, just turned it up on the lathe, and that was easily done. And then I'll show you on the bottom what uh, is going on there. Now on the bottom we've got, these are the original connectors, and I'm, re I'm, re I'm retaining those, basically just so I, I can take power off it if I want to. But the wiring itself, which comes from the, the generator down here, just goes through to the crossover switch, and then from there it just goes up to the light. So this is, you know, on in one, one direction, off in the middle, and on in another direction. The switch costs $5, you know, big deal. But this is a better way of doing it. I mean, they could basically have used this switch when they made the unit, save all that belt swapping around, you know, for directional change, and done away with these connection points altogether. It's probably work out cheaper, actually, if they'd done this. But anyway, I've retained these connection points because they are going to be handy for running other items, lights and stuff off of it. And, um, yeah, basically the generator just comes, the wiring comes out the generator, goes into these two points here, and uh, then just comes back out again. So these are two outlets, two connection points here, and you, these things just got a little tab that clicks up. It's just a quick action release. The wiring comes out. That's it. Really good. I mean, it's well made. So this is, you know, a bit of a fiddly job, but it's it's all very doable by anybody that's got a, solder, a small soldering iron. And, uh, yeah, the, the finished product, I think, looks better than that red button they had, which I thought was a bit, it was all right, but I think that looks a hell of a lot neater. And... Uh, so that's it, that's the latest little job I've been doing. So now it's just a matter of flick the switch for whatever motor I've got driving the generator. And uh, most of them that I've got run anti-clockwise. But there are a few steam engines that go clockwise, so yeah, it'll save mucking around. Now for anyone that's not familiar with wiring up a crossover switch, it's dead easy to do, but I did, I did a video on it which has been <laughs> immensely popular showing exactly how you wire up a crossover switch and I'll put a, a link to that where there'll be a, um, an end screen video come up and you just click on that and you can find out how to do it. It's, it's pretty simple but a lot of people don't understand how to do it and it, it sounds confusing but it's not really. It's quite straightforward if you know how and that video will show you exactly how. Okay, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.